you to give up thanks I just wanna give you all I can There's something but you baby and I can't get enough There's something that you give me and I can't get enough You don't need to tell me that you love me I don't mind waiting for it to show Hey guys and welcome back to our channel. The Castaway Couple. How's that? Mm, I You're still not sold on the shorts, are you? I'm not totally approved to this outfit. I like this color scheme. It's, it's nice. Like we are going to the beach. Okay. We're not going to the beach. We're going to the botanicals. You're gonna see so many other people just wearing shorts. We're Aussies, mate. Aussie. You're not Aussies. What am I? Polish. Antarctican. Polish. <laughs> I was born here. I'm Aussie. Yeah. Just, I got Polish blood. Yeah, but I'm still Aussie. Hang on. I'll just check the oil. I might actually have to go to the shed and grab a bit more. That's better. Much better. Cool. That's all it needed. All right, done. Good. Now we are going to see some flowers. And I'm going to be taking photos if he doesn't like the You know what? It really gives you a lot of ideas what you can do to your own house walking around a garden like this. Imagine the backyard of Dolores, like... Still a lot of work to do, speaking of which, quite a lot of work to do in the backyard. The top section's, what do you reckon, 90% finished? Yes. Isn't um, Kuya Louis doing the pebbles in the uh, garden bed today, isn't he? Yeah. Or... Which reminds me, I'll have to call him mm. later. So we've had a few things done over the past few weeks. Um, we've got solar lights put up around the house, basically for security purposes. So um, all batteries in built. Each one has a solar panel. They're 200 watt LEDs. They're basically like a floodlight. So yeah, we've put them up around the house, a few in the backyard, just to light the property up overnight. Hopefully act as a bit of a deterrent for anybody that's got mischievous ideas. Um, but I think the area is pretty pretty safe I don't think anybody really creeps around there too much so um, other than that it's mainly gardening that needs to be done now and the furniture which we'll be doing piece by piece as we go and coming somewhere like this really gives you a lot of inspiration you know seeing all these different plants and vegetation excuse me can you take me a photo here and I'm being interrupted yes like that okay just hold it one hand I can't do one hand yeah one hand, yeah, one hand. Like oh, that. Uh -huh. Okay, ready? Yeah, set action. Three action. <laughs> I can't press it. There you go. It's awkward. That actually looks alright. Oh. Can I see? I don't know. What do you think? Critique. <laughs> <laughs> Is it shit? Yeah. That's fine. I like it. You see quite a few people with like little gimbals and cameras. vlogging equipment, ca cameras, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll stand out the most because this is huge, like, <laughs> but still. It's just nice to get out of the house, isn't it? Yeah. Spend the day out like this, walk around, get a bit of vitamin D. Mm, soak it up. Oh. 
Hey guys and wait. <laughs> Fucking hell. Hey guys and Hello. welcome back to the channel. The Castaway Couple. Cheers. We want to just have a casual conversation today and throw some ideas out into the ether and get some of your opinions and um, get some context around what you think would be a good way, especially those of you who are specifically looking to move to the Philippines or a country in Southeast Asia, how you think you would go about establishing a financial structure where you can actually earn income without adhering to the nine to five, without just going and getting a mundane job, paying your bills, going home, and basically accepting the system where you have to give up the healthiest and strongest years of your life to be able to enjoy pretty much the worst and the weakest end part of you know this one experience that you get here on earth. So you work as a wage slave your whole life, you retire, at an old age, if you manage to pay all, you know, get all your affairs in order, pay your house off, and we also don't subscribe to the idea where we have to wait until, until 65, 70. Yeah, 65 plus just to, you know, be able to enjoy a little bit of our lives and then cark it. Mm. No, we don't subscribe to that. I don't know why people accept this, you know, without any revolt. Like this is the right thing to do, or this is normal, this is good. Like the person to think like you are tied up to work until the old age like you're only gonna have two days per week of freedom and you're earning money that's not enough to live to enjoy life just enough to pay bills it's just meaningless it's just like meaningless existence and it's depressing I myself like I'm just doing it autonomously like I've been in the company for in, in the company for I think over four years already and just go through the motions it's every day, really. It's just emotion. Yeah. It's, it's so depressing. It's like I'm excited on the weekends, and then as soon as the weekend is done, I'm back to depression. Monday, mm. Friday. And even if the majority are doing it, doesn't necessarily make it the right way or the best way. And <clears> like I said, it might work for some of you, but for us, it just seems too depressing, and it's not something that... It's not something that we want for our lives. So anyone who's watching this channel, um, you're probably like-minded and you're probably looking at similar alternatives yourself. So that's why we just wanted to have this casual conversation and throw some of these ideas out there. Now, passive income generation, or it doesn't have to be passive, just in general, income generation outside of this standard way of living and standard way of earning in another country, especially in a Southeast Asian country. So online businesses, which, are very volatile so you have to have really something unique or you have to really be a person in the know or within a good online community and you have to have a capital a good amount of funds yes. to start up that's true and you whatever you invest you sort of have to it's a gamble go in with a mindset that you're going to be willing to lose that money and it, it can't affect your life outside of what you invest mm. you know what i mean so that is an option that's not really, at least not in the beginning, that's not for us. Some people out on YouTube basically just crush any idea or hope of having a business in the Philippines. Um, and their reasoning for that is because you're obviously trying to tailor a market around people that, that aren't really quite as comfortable in life and they, they have less, you know? So if you base your business model on making money off people that already don't have a lot, then your chances of success, you know, are far and few between, which makes a lot of sense. So that's not something that we're looking at, especially after having seen all the different informations and perspective from people. Um, we wanna try and stay away from that in the beginning. So we're looking down the avenue of property. Now, it's a completely different beast in the Philippines as what it is here in Australia. Property is nowhere near as liquid and we know that but we're not looking into buying and selling. We're more looking into, let's say, units or townhouses, <coughs> villas, apartments, whatever you want to call them in your country, uh, in your respective countries. But basically an investment where we build, we buy a block of land and we build 
rentals and we just rent them out for a monthly, uh, a monthly price. From a very limited experience that we have, that seems like the most fluid and the most stable way. Most guaranteed uh, return. Yeah. Because um, there's always going to be someone who would rent the um, house or rooms. Always. And with property as well, while you have it rented out, not only are you collecting a stable monthly income, the value is also increasing on your properties. As land gets more scarce, you know, it, it's common everywhere all over the world. Things inflate, things go up, land increases, the property value increases too. So even if you get into dire straits, you have one or two to sell just to get you out of jail, which again can take a long time, but it's there. So you're in a way you're profiting from profiting from both ends. Mm. You know, you're making money for your life. Without any um, like extra like headaches because it's just there it's sitting there hmm. you know like you know, you don't like operate it or maybe a little bit of maintenance maintenance is but you don't sorry it's not like supervise them 24 7. it's not eight to ten it's, hours it's of your life like a an, day uh, it's not like a business where you have to constantly um be attentive of hmm. profit and loss so that's we are thinking of things we are thinking of ways to make this move and to make this life possible. We're certainly mm. not just, you know, diving, diving into the waters completely blind. There's no hope for humanity. Without any, any sense of responsibility or without any idea of what we're doing. Um, that's why we haven't jumped ship yet. That's why we're still living still here in here. Australia. We're still, still taking advantage of the system, taking advantage of work and money, um, which is just, I think it's a smart thing to do. And if you have a dream and if you have a goal, you've got to plan it in such a way where, you know, if you take small steps every day, you're getting closer and closer to it. And everyone's just trying to improve their lives. Everybody wants the best for themselves. And for us, this is the best way out of wage slavery and out of the nine to five grind, which is, that is like the ultimate goal for us. That is... Probably the most important thing in our lives is to have more time for each other and not so much that, it's to alleviate the stress. Mm. Stress is the biggest killer. Stress is the cause of cancers. Stress is the cause for overeating, which is the cause for diabetes, which is the cause for obesity, then comes diabetes. You know, stress is the fundamental root cause of most health concerns. You know, setting aside genetic predispositions, but stress. I'm very stressed every day. Yeah, you heard it from the horse's mouth right there. So you know, that's the um, that's the biggest thing here that we're trying to alleviate is that stress. <laughs> <laughs> stress is the biggest thing that we're trying to alleviate out of our lives, and the way that we're living, and the environment that we're in. The trade is coming. Oh uh, uh, yeah. I love Toowoomba, but I'm talking about the financial construct and the governmental construct. That environment that we're in is highly stressful, and I'm sure a lot of people here can relate. So, you've got to chase, you've got to chase that out. If it's something you truly want, you've got to chase it, and you've got to think of different ways. You've got to think outside the box, and that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So, we're not criticizing anybody for living the way that they live, or for wanting to live that they want to live. Whether this works for you and you're happy here, you're happy with the hustle and bustle and, you know, making as much cash and having all the things. Buying if, all the material yeah, things. Yeah, if that works for you, we're honestly shoes. happy for you. Like, if that's what you want. I like bags. I like my bags. You like bags, see, right there. <laughs> yeah, everybody has their things that they like, you know, but for us, as much as we do like nice things, I think we prefer the freedom of life a lot more and we're willing to sacrifice it and that's exactly what this journey is about. So, just wanted to say a big thank you once again. Please like, share and subscribe. Chuck your comments in the comment section below and we'll see you on the next one guys. Take care. Ciao.